Welcome folks to the channel. This is Josh with Bennett Fishing. We're gonna go over uh, basically a how to catch rainbow trout. Now you guys have seen me in my earlier videos this year where we're catching stalkers. So those are fish that are stalked like a month ago. These fish are a lot smarter. They're called holdover fish. They were either stalked in the spring or stalked the previous year. They can get up to like 25, 26 inches in that five to six pound range. They get absolutely massive. And I'll kind of explain why I'm in this area. So right now we're inside of a cove and I'm on the inside turn of it. And then there's another inside turn on the other side. And we're gonna set up a jaw jacker. And I'm, a, I'm gonna talk about the whole setup of why we're in here and why we're kind of fishing really, really shallow. So rainbows are notorious cruisers. They literally just never, ever stop. They just go, go, go. One of the things they do is they hammer uh, pin smelt or smelt in general. Right now I don't have any smelt. I hate, hate, hate. I know hate's a bad word. I hate dealing with smelt. You have to have an aerator running, you can't breathe on them, you can't touch them wrong, or otherwise they'll die. So I'm running uh, small shiners and medium shiners right now, and I'll show you the whole setup, how I rig them and everything. Of course, we're gonna drill a hole. I'm basically mirror imaging where I am uh, a little bit away from me. Let's talk about the tackle. This is a prototype uh, jaw jacker rod from Circle Tackle. Uh, Full-size foam handle, doesn't even have labels on it, so I'm not even sure how long it is, but it is a very stout rod. 1,000 size reel from them, from Circle Tackle, 15 pound braid. And I think this is a 12 pound leader because I was going for lake trout and didn't change over. Some people run all the way down to six to eight. Um, I wouldn't probably go under eight at all, but I think this is 12 or 15 maybe. Then we have a little split shot, maybe one or two of those. And then we have a medium shiner, and this is a, I'll give the exact, show you the exact package. I basically use the same stuff I do for stock trout. Um, it's just a little bit different. This is uh, the Gamagatsu number six octopus light hook. And one thing you did see me that I didn't talk about is this bobber right here. This is crucial. Uh, you can buy these on, th on Amazon and I'll leave a link for Snapper who actually sells these. This is a uh, like a slack line bobber and I'll show you why we're doing it. So we're just setting up a jaw jacker. You can also set up a snapper if you want. Um, I'll leave a link for both of those things below. But right now, we can see bottom. And it probably is about four feet deep. But I'm gonna run this guy literally a couple feet below the ice. Open my bill a little bit. And this rod is like super, super stout. So we want to get him down there like that. And you want to set your jaw jacker like so. So what's going to happen is a big rainbow or even a small rainbow is going to come and pull this. And that rainbow has to suck up all of that line first before he gets whacked. If you know you're in a good spot that has sand or something like that, try downsizing to one of these little, little tiny tiny shiners or a smelt if you feel like dealing with smelt. So this is one area, like I'm on an inside bend. I will walk away from this as far as I can possibly see it. You don't want to make any, any noise. So any noise jumping on the ice, anything like that will spook the fish. I know that for a fact, I've seen it on a water camera, move away from it as far as you can. Coves are good. Sandy beaches are good, so if you can see a beach from uh, Google Earth where it freezes nice and early, hit one of those areas, put it in that one to three foot range. Those rainbows literally cruise right underneath the ice. But you want your, if you're in like four feet of water, you want your shiner in that top, let's say third. So like a foot and a half down. These rainbows are looking up, they're looking to pin stuff up against the ice. So that's one spot. John, there, there's one on. Nice rainbow. Not a very big one, but nice rainbow. This thing is all beat. Stop, stop, stop. Not a 20 incher, but nice one. Going back in. So there's one more spot. So there's another spot that I, I don't promote 
and I don't want you guys to do it, and I'm not showing it on purpose, um, but if you have someone with you and you have a rescue rope and you can tie it to someone and you're wearing a float suit and you've got ice spikes, mine are tucked in my shirt here, is uh, a lot of people have docks that are out in the lake that they don't pull out. They may, you know, with pylons and stuff like that or, or they're uh, a boathouse. What they'll do is they'll put aerators in those areas, like basically a, a underwater fan, basically a pump to keep it from freezing around that uh, spot. What you can do is drill a hole as close as you can feel safe, that three to four, that four inches of ice, whenever you stop getting four inches of ice, that's where you drill and set your jaw jacker right there, same concept. You wanna be in that top third of the water column. That is really crucial uh, in that one to, I wouldn't go any, anywhere deeper than six feet. Uh, yes, you can jig them. I've jigged them up in like 16 foot of water, but they usually cruise in that, probably halfway up the water column and up. They're cruising in that area. Very rarely are they down at the bottom like lake trout are. So you gotta treat them that way. Halfway and up, that top third and up is a little bit better. If you can get your hands on fresh, really good spunky smelt, uh, really big ones, that is really crucial. So with that little tiny hook, that'll pin them right in the back of the mouth there. They'll swallow that thing and uh, you'll see in the rest of the video today, they're getting whacked right in the, the top of the mouth there with no, uh, no big damage. I'm gonna walk away from this, and I don't have another one down. I, I only have this one down. So there's two, there's two areas that you can target them. Uh, so actually three areas, coves, inside turns, where they can pin uh, smelt or bait against stuff. Uh, beaches, which are really, really easy, really easy to find from Google Earth. They usually freeze really early because they're in bays. And then number three, I do not suggest, which is near those aerators. It's a really good area, and you will you will catch them um, if you're if you're out in the middle of a big area, big part of the lake, and it's safe. Um, you can't send them just underneath the ice. They will cruise out there. It's just not as common as them. They kind of act kind of like brook trout in the winter time, as they they need shoreline on one of their shoulders. It's kind of like a I don't know a relation kind of thing, I guess. See what it is. Oh, it's a big old rainbow. It's a big rainbow. Well hooked too. Come on. Come up the hole. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, nice rainbow. 20 on the money. All right, first rainbow of the year, nice 20 incher. That is a trophy for New Hampshire right there. Going right back in, kind of about three feet of water. Going right back in. He was perfectly hooked in the top of the mouth, that little tiny hook, so. We're gonna send another one back down. That was a medium shiner. Let's do that again. So also don't be scared to move your stuff around. If you are not catching fish, give it like 30 minutes, maybe 45 minutes for a double setup. So one in each area, move one in, move one out, kind of a little bit, stagger them depth wise. Um, they seem to be, you know, they're running in that cove, they're pinning bait in that cove. They're still relating to that shoreline. They're kind of cruising the whole lake on that shoreline. It seems to work pretty well. They're not that much different than stocked like freshly stocked trout, they still have the same ambition is to eat, eat, eat. The other thing you can do is to kind of scout an area. So if you're not using live bait, you don't need to use that slip bobber. What you can do, use is salmon eggs here in New Hampshire or basically uh, trout eggs if it's legal in your state. But we use salmon eggs, a little jar of like Potsky salmon eggs. You have to find what color works best for you. Suspend those um, in the same way in that top part of the water column. You can put them right on bottom, it's not very common. If you know you're in a good area, like a big beach, what you can do is get out there before legal fishing time. Uh, we have a legal fishing time, which is kind of silly one hour before sunrise, and drill a whole bunch of holes out there. And what you want to do is, as soon as it turns legal, start dropping a couple of salmon eggs in those holes. 
and you want to like basically make a grid pattern on that beach it's it's a lot of work but if you really are into catching big rainbows they pound for pound they they run compared to lake trout uh, which is one of the reasons i target them every once in a while just to mix it up basically drop those salmon eggs down those holes in that one to four foot of water you should be able to see them give that like 30 minutes and then walk back through the same pattern where you left where you started from look down those holes and see if you're seeing salmon eggs down those holes if they're missing one it could be a perch because those little perch do that or two a rainbow's come by and suck those eggs up put a trap right there with another salmon egg on it or put a, a jaw jacker or a snapper right there you can use tip-ups but the likelihood of you gut hooking a trout with a tip up in that shallow water is pretty high. And I thought I heard it just go off. You can put bells on these things too, little clip on bells, which I'll show you right now. I think I got mine. They're like little catfish bells. I got mine at Bass Pro. God, I'm spilling all the beans for you guys. Just one of these little clip on ones. I, they get tangled around the line sometimes too, which are, are kind of annoying, but you want to make sure that that's clipped on there properly so it doesn't get tangled right on the like the second eyelet. So, so when, it, when it goes off, you hear that bell. Yeah, so that's all the tricks that I know for catching rainbow trout. Do the egg pattern, do inside coves, do beaches, do the aerator only, only, only if you have to, because it's super dangerous. You don't know what, how much ice is undercut from that aerator. So I don't suggest it unless, I just don't suggest it. Uh, beaches are fine. These inside coves and stuff are fine. You will catch lake trout up doing the same thing. They'll be pinning bait against shore. And so I hope you guys found found this useful. This is kind of the end of the day recap. I don't know if I'm going to catch one more uh, in the next few minutes here, but we only have a little bit more daylight and I really don't feel like packing up in the dark. So if you found this video useful and you want to see more ice fishing content, either click here for a whole playlist of ice fishing stuff. And if you want to see lake trout stuff or even stock trout, uh, click here. That'll bring you and I'll see you in one of those next videos.